I'm sitting here working on another video when I see this come out. <laughs> Rings of Power, you're so cute. Season two is going to be so much fun. There's a reason why it said pictures are worth a thousand words. Pictures are communication, one of the most efficient and powerful forms of communication. This is true whether we're talking moving pictures or still photography. And where images get their efficiency and power is through the use of symbolism. Let's have a little fun. Well, at least my idea of fun. Let's do an analysis of the symbolism that the Rings of Power is using in their promotional rollout of season two. Doing a photo shoot that features the stars of an upcoming project is as old as Hollywood. The Rings of Power isn't doing anything new. They're walking well-trod ground. What is the number one thing that Hollywood has always sold? Make-believe, fantasy, and it just doesn't mean the movie or TV show. It's the whole package around the TV show or movie that they're selling. It's all make-believe. In an effort to convince the audience to part with our money, the experience was more than just going to the movies. Hollywood created an entire world of glitz and glamour where we, the audience, could vicariously live out our fantasies and dreams. The golden age of Hollywood, 1930s and 40s, the Depression, World War II, some of the hardest times in American history. No one had extra money. Hollywood, they not only survived, there's a reason why it's called the golden age of Hollywood. They understood the number one rule of entertainment. Give the audience what they want. Whether it was the promotional images or the films themselves, you got to see gorgeous women wearing gorgeous clothes who oozed femininity. It wasn't just the people who were supposed to be beautiful. Fashion and style. The environments were meant to be glamorous as well. You wanted to be the people. You wanted to be in the environments. Once the audience bought into the fantasy, the beautiful people that we saw on the screen could become trendsetters. Catherine Hepburn and her pants completely changed women's fashion. Why did men stop carrying pocket watches? Actors like Humphrey Bogart, Clark Gable, Cary Grant, were paid large sums of money to wear wristwatches in their publicity photos and their movies. Suddenly, women were giving wristwatches as gifts to the men in their lives. Ladies, let me tell you all a little secret. You want to know the easiest way to get a man to do what you want? Tell him you like it. Yeah, but that system was unjust because those beautiful actresses had to cater to the male gaze. Bullshit because those beautiful actresses were catering to the female gaze. Remember, the focus of this video is the promotional photo shoot. They were done to create the fantasy around the star. The beautiful actress was held up to other women as the ideal, something they could aspire to. My grandmother used to call them picture books. Look, Life Magazine, Vanity Fair, Saturday Evening Post, many others. They would do photo shoots, your favorite stars at home. The point of these photo shoots were to show your favorite stars' everyday lives were just as glamorous as what you saw up there on the big screen. Men weren't the ones buying these magazines and reading these articles. It was women who wanted to know what their favorite stars did in their daily lives, their fashions, cosmetic and perfume choices, how they decorated their homes, Again, this is being held up as an ideal, something to aspire to. You may not be an actress appearing on the big screen, but you can dress like one, you can smell like one, you can decorate your home like one, you can live your life as if you're one. Because Hollywood was trying to create a fantasy, an ideal that women could aspire to, actresses were portrayed as self-confident, proud of their femininity. A woman's femininity gave her power. On the flip side, audiences, both men and women, demanded that men be portrayed as men. A great example of that is this image of Humphrey Bogart. Elbow on knee, back straight, shoulders square, leaning slightly forward, eyes looking directly into the camera. One hand is hidden, the other hand is holding his hat in front of his crotch. 
This is a strong, self-confident man who's also reserved. He's not prepared to share everything with you. Leastways, not yet. Bogey's expression, the look in his eye, this is a dangerous man. You don't want to mess with him because he could ruin your day. Nowadays, we associate trench coats and fedoras with hard-boiled detectives and gangsters. Back when this picture was taken, the trench coat had military connotations. Most people don't realize the trench coat was designed so you could access a firearm quickly, indicating that men who wore trench coats lived active lives, so to speak. The hidden hand with the symbolism of the trench coat, it's reinforcing the idea, Bogey's a dangerous man. We have another photo, probably from the same photo shoot, and this time Bogey has his hat on, collar up, indicating action. Back straight, shoulder squared, slightly leaning forward with the arm extended, he's projecting self-confidence. But having his hat on and collar up, he's not being casual. He's being formal, reserved. The eyes, they're not looking up, indicating deceit. They're not looking down, indicating submission. They're looking off to the side, reinforcing the idea of self-confidence. By leaning slightly forward with the arm extended, it's as if he's engaging the audience in a conversation, but something important off to the side has caught his attention. Vigilance. It's reinforcing the idea that Bogey is dangerous. A publicity shot of Bogey and Bacall and their children. Check out Bogey's body language. He's actually sending two messages. He's looking and leaning in towards Bacall and the children. Right foot aimed at the family. Right shoulder dropped down so he can hold his daughter's hand, who's peeking out from behind her daddy. Left shoulder square, left arm slightly bent, left foot aimed forward. He's the one closest to the camera, as if he's trying to put himself between his family and the audience. He's both loving family man and their protector. Different picture from the same photo shoot, and the symbolism is even clearer. Bogey is looking directly at his family, ignoring the audience. Right hand is around his family, as if he's giving them a hug. Left hand covering his crotch. He's being open towards his family, reserved towards the audience. Things get real interesting when you start exploring how the power dynamics between the masculine and the feminine were portrayed in Golden Age Hollywood. Bogey and Pakal are sitting shoulder to elbow, full contact. They're very clearly very comfortable with each other. Bacall is sitting closer to the camera. She's in the dominant position. But y'all will notice their shoulders. They're side by side. Bacall is not trying to sit in front of Bogey, and Bogey's not trying to sit in front of her. Bacall is sitting shoulders square to the camera, knees pointing at the camera, indicating openness, self-confidence. She has a slight lean towards Bogey with her hand pointing towards Bogey, indicating there's some sort of relationship there. Bogey has both shoulders square to the camera, one knee pointing at the camera, again reinforcing the idea of self-confidence, openness. But he has that one hand covering his crotch and the other knees pointing away. He's cautious, reserved. Bogey has a subtle lean in towards Bacall, Whatever relationship Bacall thinks she has with Bogey, he's confirming it. Neither one is showing any type of dominance over the other one. I love this photo. It's such a great use of light. Bacall is the focus of the picture, but she's mostly in shadow, giving her an air of mystery. You can see the curve of Bacall's lower back, shoulders square and back, arm across tummy, this is a woman who's proud of her femininity. The part of Bacall's face that's clearly lit, those eyes. Those eyes, those eyes, those eyes. Those eyes are the only thing Bogey cares about in the world. Y'all tell me, who has the power in this photo? Randy, this video is supposed to be about the Rings of Power photo shoot. Why are you yammering on about old Hollywood? <laughs> You'll see. What's the make-believe world, the fantasy that the Rings of Power is trying to weave around the stars of their show? The photo shoot of season one got a lot of backlash. One reason, the portrayal of Galadriel, one of the most beautiful and feminine women in all of literature, 
was being portrayed in a very masculine manner. This image doesn't project self-confidence. It projects aggression that's aimed directly at the audience. Freudian slip, maybe? In the show itself, she was portrayed as harsh and unyielding, all hard edges and sharp elbows. You know, she can kill an ice troll in under 10 seconds. It wasn't just Galadriel, though. Everybody in the show was depicted in a harsh, unflattering light. The show was clearly trying to mess around with beauty standards and gender norms. First, you build the fantasy world. Next, you convince the public to buy into that fantasy world. And it's then, and only then, can you begin to start influencing behavior. The rings of power refused to do the legwork. That's hard. They wanted to run right to influencing behavior. They got rejected, were laughed out of the room. Season two, they're back. Their response, you want feminine? We'll give you feminine. Morphid Clark, reclining in a slinky dress, bare shoulders, showing some thigh, staring intently at the camera. Wait a minute. This rings a bell. I've seen this somewhere before. They're taking a page straight from Golden Age Hollywood, portraying women who are self-confident in their femininity. It's not just Morphid Clark. All the ladies get their star turn, get to do old Hollywood glamour. McKaylee Mackinaw, reclining, bare shoulders, flowing gown. Cynthia Day Robinson, long, flowing white gown that's partially translucent. You can just start to make out her figure underneath the dress. Old Hollywood did that too. Sophia Nambetti, lots of cleavage, cinched in waist. They're trying to give her the classic hourglass figure. The golden age of Hollywood is saying, been there, done that. The complaint about season one is that the women were being portrayed as too masculine, just cheap copies of men. The rings of power's reaction? You want women to be feminine? We'll make the women hyper-feminine. Their problem? Intersectional theory. Women have to be portrayed as dominant in every single situation. What happens, though, when you portray women as being hyper-feminine? You get this. Look at the composition. On the left, you have a diagonal line, two women and then a man, and then up behind them, another man. On the center going to the right, you have the same concept repeated, but reversed. From the center going to the right, you have two women and then two men. This time, there's a man in front mirroring the composition on the other side. The first thing to notice, except for Charlie Vickers, Every other man in this picture is physically behind all the women. Old Charlie is behind Morphid and Michaela. The women are the center of focus, and the men are being portrayed as being submissive to the women. Maxim, the guy in white, on the left, all the way in the back, his knee is pointing at Sophie. He's focused on her. Charles, the guy with the big lapels sitting on the log between Sophie and Cynthia, his shoulders are squared up and he's slightly leaning towards Cynthia. Clearly, his body language, he's focused on Cynthia. Lloyd, the guy in the flower suit sitting on the log, he has his legs open, shoulders squared, leaning forward, aimed at Michaela. Owen, the Henry VIII looking guy standing on the log to the right, it's a little more subtle because at first glance, it looks like his body language has him aimed off to the right out of camera. But the body lean, the point in the elbow, he's focused on Cynthia as well. And Charlie, furthest to the right in black, his shoulders and hips are squared up, aimed directly at Morphet. Y'all will notice, in contrast, the body language of the women. Cynthia, Sophie, Michaela, their body language is aimed squarely at the camera, at the audience. Morphet's body language is aimed somewhere off to the right in between the audience and Charlie Vickers. Men being put in positions subservient to women, they're focusing their attentions on the women while the women ignore them. If you didn't get the message yet, after all, these people like to use sledgehammers between the eyes. To use intersectional language, all the men are dressed in feminine coded clothes. Charlie and Maxim's jackets have feminine tailoring. 
Their pants are loose and flowing. When they stand with their feet together, it looks like they're wearing a long skirt. Owen's overcoat thingy-a-bob? Feminine tailoring. His shirt? Feminine tailoring. Ah, Lloyd's suit isn't loose and flowing with feminine tailoring. Yeah, it's tight, form-hugging with a feminine pattern. It ain't projecting masculinity. Charles' outfit doesn't project masculinity either. None of the men are taking ownership of their space, projecting self-confidence. Look at old Charlie, arm across belly, hand on hip. Y'all have seen a similar pose to this already in this video. Charlie's trying to be smoldering, seductive. The problem? He's projecting feminine seduction. The rings of power are saying, you want feminine women? Okay, we'll give you feminine women, but we're going to make the men even more feminine. I want to end by going back to this photo of Bogey and Bacall. Those eyes. That's feminine power. Ladies, I'm going to tell you another secret, another way to get men to do what you want. Look at them the way Lauren is looking at Humphrey. At any rate, I hope I've given you all something to think about, and until next time, you all be safe. If you're still here, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. While you're at it, why don't you like this video, subscribe to the channel, click that notification bell. You can hear me yammer on about something else next time. And feel free to share this video far and wide. Please like and subscribe. Please leave a comment.